They are men and women now, but they easily recall their childhood pain. Eddie Gamble had to flee the gangs that wanted to kill him and ended up sleeping on rooftops and commuter trains. I thought about killing myself once. I mean, at that point, I was just like, there's nothing for me to do. There's absolutely, positively nothing for me to do. Nothing. Johnny O'Donnell's mother was so abusive, the state stepped in and placed him in more than a dozen foster homes. My mother had a tendency to beat us with sticks, but the strangest thing that she ever did was she used to bite us. She would just bite us in the face. And my brother, to this day, has you know, permanent scars on his nose here and uh, his face uh, from her biting. She, used to, she had just three teeth here. She would just bite them. Lydia Rossi's mother turned her over to a vicious boyfriend who held her captive day and night. He would beat me well through, through the night, torture me. He tried to drown me. He choked me in front of a mirror and let me watch my face turn purple. One place was their port in the storm, the difference between misery and happiness. For well over a century, Mercy Home for Boys and Girls has saved the lives of thousands of children. I probably wouldn't have met my wife. Probably wouldn't have uh, two wonderful children. Um, probably wouldn't be living in the house that I have right now. Um, this place, uh, I, everything I have, I owe to God and the Mercy Home. Mercy Home is a real home. Children live here 365 days a year. The boys in Chicago's West Loop community, the girls in the Beverly neighborhood. Suddenly, I go from living in the poor situations that I have grown accustomed to, to living in the Walgreens mansion with a whole bunch of girls my age. Not all of our kids come from abusive families. Some, like Miguel, suffer the deaths of parents. It was very painful for me. Kim's mother could not shield her from the violence at their public housing project. You automatically just duck. And my mom stayed on the first floor, so we got a lot of stray bullets coming in. I can say each window in that house has been replaced at least three times. Regardless of what leads them to Mercy Home, most of the children have deep emotional wounds when they arrive. Pat Zamkin, rejected by his mother, wondered what he had done wrong. I had no idea what this place was about. Um, I thought this was a place for bad kids, and I, and I couldn't figure out for life, I mean, what it was that I would, did that was so bad. Mercy Home's well-trained staff of mental health professionals shows the children they are not bad. Through intense counseling, they learn to trust. They have a big wall put up, and you have to take it down. And while you're taking it down, you have to replace it with something that they believe is going to be as helpful to them as the block that you just took down. Education is a high priority here. Mercy Homes children attend more than 50 schools. Many of the boys and girls go on to college, and Mercy does everything possible to help get them there but we provide tutoring for them, we provide computers and good software, and all sorts of encouragement, all sorts of activities that promote education here at the home. It is the future for these young people, without a doubt. Christina attended Elmhurst College on a full scholarship. If not Mercy, I would not be here today. I would not be going to school with a full ride. I would not be able to dream, and Mercy made it possible. But with this opportunity comes the demand for responsibility. The children at Mercy Home are taught to cook, clean, and manage their time. Many of the older kids have part-time jobs. Mercy could not make any of this possible without all of our donors. Nearly 100% of the home's funds come from people just like you. If we were dependent upon government, government would be saying, this is how you do program, this is who stays with you, this is who leaves. Because we're not dependent, we are really able to afford these young people a fine home, a good education, and the necessary therapeutic support to build lives of hope and future. Lives of hope and future in a loving family environment that all children deserve. You can say to yourself, you know, I've got some chits up there with St. Peter because I really did try to give my heart to those who were down and out and hurting.
Today, Eddie, Johnny, and Lydia are far from hurting. They are thriving. Eddie served in the military and now works for the Illinois Attorney General. Johnny is a Chicago police sergeant. Lydia is working on an MBA at the University of Chicago. Like so many Mercy kids, they are now contributing to our community, paying big dividends on our donors' investment. I'm absolutely appreciative of everything I've received from the boys home, none of which I could have done without that support. There's so many things that could have happened in my life to me if it hadn't been for Mercy. And I really believe to this day that they saved my life. And I couldn't have possibly made it without you or your home. And I thank you for that. 